Hey all and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a historic saloon located off of South Montezuma Street in Prescott, Arizona that holds the mantles of being both the oldest business and oldest bar in the state, having hosted a number of famous names over its existence, such as the likes of Wyatt and Virgil Earp, Doc Holliday, and Steve McQueen, acting as set to a range of famous films including Junior Bonner, Billy Jack, and Wanda Nevada, and purported to harbor an assortment of very real restless spirits tied to its past. Are you prepared to brave the ghosts of the palace restaurant and saloon? Historically, the town of Prescott was first founded in 1864, and shortly after, a number of entertainment venues, saloons, and the like began sprouting up in an area near its center, which was eventually dubbed Whiskey Row. In 1867, one D.C. Thorne would purchase a plot locally, and in 1877, he would construct the Palace Saloon as one of over 40 bars that, at the time, dotted the row. Thorne would retain ownership over this property until it burned to the ground in 1883, after which the plot was sold to Robert Brow, who would reconstruct the saloon utilizing fire-safe technologies before reopening it to the public a year later in 1884. Unfortunately, in 1900, another more major fire would strike Whiskey Row, engulfing the saloon, during which time, dedicated patrons and staff would work together to lift the beloved business's luxurious, hand-carved Brunswick Bar from the building, after which they would place it on the opposite end of the street and would promptly resume drinking as the other side burned just yards away. Eventually, the building would be reconstructed once more and would be merged with the adjacent Cabinet Saloon before reopening in 1901 as the Palace Hotel and offering a range of gambling endeavors, including faro, poker, kino, and craps. Through prohibition, while the palace would publicly close its doors, it would secretively host a speakeasy out of its basement. Over the following decades, it would also serve as a local mineral office, an electoral poll stop, and as a place for locals to find work. And in 1996, it would undergo an extensive renovation that would result in the old watering hole's restoration to its original appearance, which included the re-addition of swinging doors, oak wainscoting, hardwood floors, and leaded glass windows. Most recently, in 2011, Prescott would implement its renowned New Year's boot drop based off of New York's ball drop, during which a boot is dropped from the roof of the palace right at the stroke of midnight. The palace remains open to this day, offering a dinner theater, steakhouse fair, and waitstaff fully clothed in garb of said respective era. And at the bar, one can even order Old Overhaul, their preferred beverage of Doc Holliday himself. Over its lengthy existence, a number of local legends surrounding various hauntings of the palace have formed, with many claiming activity is a result of the lingering spirits of past patrons, occupants, and employees. And through the premises, many have reported objects sighted moving on their own, the sounds of music and of what seems to be a party heard emanating from the building when it's closed and dark, disembodied voices and footsteps from empty spaces, shadowy figures that roam about, ghostly gunshots, and run-ins with a range of full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the ages, one more frequently encountered being the ghost of a prostitute named Alice, who's thought to have either taken her own life or died from an improperly executed abortion. The establishment was also noted for its nefarious nature, was often used as a brothel, opium den, underground jail, and for gambling, and was subject to constant spouts of violence. On a side note, Doc Holliday's common-law wife, Mary Catherine Horney Cummins, better known as Big Nose Kate, served as one of the palace's many working girls for a time. Additionally, before departing to Tombstone, Wyatt Earp participated in a number of gunfights behind the old bar, even killing two men, and the good doctor took a man's life in a knife fight within, and several unidentified entities are believed to be tied to these unfortunate souls lost so long ago. Also described across the site are the unnerving sensations of being watched, followed, touched, grabbed, or even of being hit and scratched by a presence unseen, and reports from female visitors of being touched inappropriately by invisible hands. 
In August of 1884, Nellie Coyle, who worked the local Johns under the name of Ginny Clark, was beaten to death by her boyfriend, Fred Glover, who was subsequently sentenced to hang, but whom ended up getting released from prison instead. Many tell the couple's bickering spirits remain, causing objects to fly dangerously through the air and creating commotion from empty rooms. Several informal investigations of the property have yielded orbs and mists in photography and video, chilling EVPs, and ghostly forms spied drifting around corners, and both staff and visitors often report lights flickering or being turned off inexplicably, leaving all present in darkness. One final popular legend tells of a man named Nevis, who, long ago, was involved in a game of poker, during which he posted his own mortuary business up for collateral, before losing everything to the town sheriff. Now, legend dictates that whenever men play poker within the palace, old Nevis has a habit of showing up, even begging to play, in attempts to earn one more shot at reclaiming the game that once ruined his life. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.